from introducing a way to sell their tickets like no one has, to the future of the franchise turning out to be worse, The Flash's box office fail reignites James Gunn and Dwayne Johnson's beef, and here's what's been going on. As most of you know, DC's latest release has been doing terribly at the box office, grossing just $15.3 million in its second domestic weekend. This is a 73% drop from its $55 million debut, which is also just as unimpressive. The second weekend's turning out to be the second worst box office drop in superhero film history, and the way the studios are handling it is even worse. Fandango is offering a buy one get one free ticket for the movie just so the numbers can go up a little. After all, the budget was somewhere over $200 million, and at this rate, it seems like Warner Brothers will be losing a ton of money. This is putting James Gunn at a huge disadvantage, because with the last three DC films flopping at the box office, his vision for the DC universe is not working out. So why exactly did The Flash do horribly? For starters, the CGI was one of the first things fans have seen in a long time, and I'm talking about PlayStation 2 levels bad. As compared to the characters' previous appearances in the DCEU, this was a complete downgrade, and fans could feel nothing but sadness seeing their favorite hero run around like that. There was also the fact that Barry Allen needed two additional heroes to appear in his own movie when one of those supporting characters was there just for nostalgia's sake, because no one wanted Michael Keaton back while Ben Affleck packed his bags and exited the franchise. The cameos were straight up disrespectful, unnecessary, and for some reason, always looked like a video game cutscene transitioning to gameplay. On top of that, a lot of people were against Ezra Miller and their role in the film being just for show. This was because of all that happened in Hawaii, along with the grooming incident, their sexual and gender identity, and all the deranged behavior they've presented in recent years. There's also the fact that the franchise itself is going downhill and doesn't know what to do with its characters. Zack Snyder's vision was running perfectly fine and gathered a handful of support and new fans after the digital release of the Snyder Cut. Yet, he was still let go, and Warner Brothers ended up hiring James Gunn and Peter Safran to be the new leaders of DC Films. The film also had a lot of competition, with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse dominating the box office. So what does any of this have to do with the beef between James Gunn and Dwayne Johnson? Looking at the numbers at the box office, The Flash is making less than Black Adam did. Johnson's passion project made $393 million, which is turning out to be twice the amount than the movie Gunn claimed to be the best superhero film he's ever seen. Now this is raising a lot of questions. The main one though, is why Dwayne was let go after his movie didn't do well internationally. The CEO of Warner Discovery, David Zaslav, already made up his mind about the fate of the lead actor a week after Black Adam hit theaters. When the Guardians of the Galaxy director showed up as the new co-president, it was a little easier to change the hierarchy of power in the DCEU. Dwayne's vision for the studios was a multi-film showdown that was building up the rivalry between Henry Cavill's Superman and his Teth Adam. Gunn had plans that didn't involve the anti-hero in the front and center, and wanted to start from scratch. He intended to use The Flash as the movie that was going to reboot the franchise and introduce the new characters he had in mind. The fans weren't so thrilled by this sudden change, which is probably because they're so done with this struggling brand. People pointed out how Black Adam made more than Shazam! Fury of the Gods and The Flash while releasing the film during COVID. The movie was a combo of bad marketing, damaged brands, and weak word of mouth. The irony in all of this is, it still made more than the movies, with the biggest characters on the DC slate, which includes half the Justice League like Wonder Woman and two Batman. So how did The Rock react to all of this? The former WWE superstar took a huge jab at Gunn. When talking about the future of his character in the franchise, he didn't sound too optimistic. With the exit of the star, the new order of things in the studios also had to rule out Cavill's Superman in the process, which Johnson described as their best foot forward when making the movie. He mentioned that the audience score the movie got was somewhere in the 90s, and it's expected of critics to throw some shots at a blockbuster like that. Here's where things got interesting, though. Dwayne compared his position with the character and studios like a pro football team, where a quarterback wins championships and the head coach wins championships. But when a new owner shows up and says, not my coach, not my quarterback, he'd side with somebody new. 
This was obviously shade thrown at the new co-president, making it sound like he's the new owner who's not okay with how things are running. And it's absolutely true, since Black Adam was comparatively a money machine to the franchise and Warner Brothers, despite the fact that it's a box office bomb. Suppose Black Adam was a green light by the higher-ups of DC. How different would the universe have been? According to rumors, Johnson had something more than just a franchise that focuses on anti-heroes in mind, because he wanted a sequel to his first film, Black Adam vs. Superman and Black Adam vs. The Justice League. There were going to be more Superman movies, starring Henry as well, and rumors about Snyder sticking around on the sidelines. I think Dwayne is forgetting that his character is mainly Shazam's nemesis, and not Kal-El's. Not only would a universe like that get exhausting, it just wouldn't make sense. On top of that, Zachary Levi's Billy Batson wouldn't have fit Cavill's Superman and Johnson's Black Adam, since Captain Marvel is more lighthearted than the other two. Maybe Dwayne was being selfish, but something like that just wouldn't work and was bound to fail. Fans already jumped ship back when they announced Affleck and Cavill's uncertain returns as the world's finest, so seeing The Rock struggle with a franchise by making him the center of attention was amusing. Gunn's DCU, on the other hand, is built around Amanda Waller, the Suicide Squad, Batman, and Superman, instead of using the Justice League. He plans on using the authority to battle the last son of Krypton, which sounds like a fresh take on the rivalries in the universe. Did we dodge a bullet or miss the perfect opportunity to show Marvel their money's worth? The answer to that is right in front of your eyes, with The Flash's performance giving everyone an idea about the future of the universe. The last three movies of the franchise flopping hard isn't the best start to your vision. Fans have also realized that the quality of these films has significantly dropped ever since Zack Snyder was booted as director. The latest releases are turning out to be popcorn flicks that would have had Martin Scorsese banging his head against the wall, because now he has to deal with not one, but two theme park franchises. You'll know what I mean if you've seen The Flash, because let me tell you, not everyone was a fan of the story, or jokes, or CGI, or anything, actually. So everyone's pointing their fingers at the director, Andy Muschietti, who's defending the sloppy visual effects by saying it's all blurry, because we're seeing things the way Barry sees them in super speed. If that's the case, then what was the $200 million budget spent on? Even Shazam was easier on the eyes than fake Christopher Reeves and fake Nicolas Cage. And that's saying something, because Billy Batson was always surrounded by a ridiculously obvious green screen. So when everyone heard that Muschietti is set to direct Brave and the Bold, it was more confusion than excitement. After being involved in what's considered to be the worst DC film in history, he just got promoted to giving the most popular comic book character a new and improved look on the big screen. Make it make sense. Anyway, with the Writers Guild of America strike going on, a lot of projects have been delayed until further notice. And this is the case with the movies from Gods and Monsters. Gunn is going to be directing and writing Superman Legacy, which will kickstart his vision right after Blue Beetle. Whatever happens next completely relies on whether or not the cast and crew are listening to what the fans have to say. So from the future of the franchise turning out to be worse, to introducing a way to sell their tickets like no one has. That was how The Flash's box office fail reignited James Gunn and Dwayne Johnson's beef.